Today we're going to talk about planning your purpose statement, which is such an important part of your dissertation because it tells others the exact purpose or goal of the study that you're conducting. When writing the purpose statement, it's going to require patience and it's going to require steadfast energy from both you and your dissertation chair. When you're writing that chapter one, you know you're embarking on a great task and there's so much planning to do to get your study just right. And so one big piece of advice that I can give you is to expect revisions. You should be turning in your very best work to your dissertation chair, but yet your chair knows where your dissertation needs to go. They've got this big picture mentality as they look at your dissertation. And so don't be offended when your dissertation chair is sending you back comments or tweaks, things that you need to change, or if you feel like your dissertation is, chair is telling you, do it again, well, just kind of expect that feedback. Now, that doesn't mean that you're turning something in just so that they can tell you how to fix it. You should give them your very best work right from the start and then let them give you feedback to take what you are proposing to the next level. So as we embark on this study today about talking about your purpose statement, know that it might take a couple of revisions to get it just right. When you get ready to write your purpose statement, there's a few things that you should have already done. And I like to think about a lot of things during dissertation as an inverted triangle, where you're starting at the top kind of broadly and working down. And so I'm going to use that analogy of an inverted triangle again. You started off with this topic that you wanted to research. And as you reviewed the literature, you came down to, wow, there's a problem that I'm seeing that I'm not finding the answer to. And then from that problem, you come down and you say, man, this is going to be the purpose of my research. This is what I really want to know. And from that purpose statement, you can narrow down even further and write your research questions that you're going to focus on. So going back to the top of our inverted triangle, we have this broad prop topic that we've read about. And in reading about that topic, you have conducted a literature review. You haven't written that literature review because that's going to come later, but you should have been going through peer-reviewed journal articles and researching different areas about that topic so that you'll really know what has been already studied about that topic and what has not. That's what helps you move from your topic to here's the problem that I see, here's the gap in the literature, and now I know the purpose of my research and I can move from the purpose statement to the research questions. So you've conducted this literature, literature review and you know what the problem is. Now we're down to that all important purpose statement. I tell my students that we work and work on the purpose statement and when we get it just right, I want them to print that purpose statement out and keep it in front of them as they're writing the rest of their dissertation, as they're conducting their study, because it's very important to keep that purpose in front of you, much as an organization needs to keep that mission statement in front of, of all of the employees and the workers and the staff people so that we're all working towards that mission statement. In the same way as you're going through chapter one and two and three and four and five, you want to keep that purpose statement at the forefront of your thinking so you'll remember, this is my purpose and this is what I need to stick to. In writing your purpose statement, you will want to think about if your study is going to be quantitative or qualitative. The purpose of your research drives that decision. A lot of time I talk with students and they're like, oh, I really want to do a quantitative study. I really want to do a qualitative study. Well, be sure that your topic and your purpose lends itself to that type of methodology because the purpose statement drives whether your study is going to be quantitative or qualitative. Creswell and Paul do a wonderful job setting up a little formula, a little template to use as you're designing your purpose statement. And you can look at the words in a purpose statement, uh, the verbs that are used, and, and quickly see whether that was a quantitative purpose or whether it was a qualitative purpose. So let me give you a couple of examples. Let's say that you're doing quantitative data about an Easter egg hunt. A quantitative question might ask, how many Easter eggs did each child find? Of course, that's only 
numerical data that's only going to be just a simple number so uh but it's it's a revolving around numbers and that's the point of a quantitative study or you might want to do a study that uh, talks about how many of the children got a prize egg and so that would again be a study dealing with numbers uh, percentages of children that got a prize egg so when you are forming that purpose statement if you are asking something that's going to deal with numbers or percentages then you are designing a quantitative study if however you ask the child who found the prize egg how did you feel when you opened the prize egg you are doing a qualitative study because you're asking the child how he or she felt about finding that prize egg of course one time at our house the prize egg had a frog in it and so those qualitative interviews would have been froth with tears and emotions uh, but it would definitely be a qualitative study to ask how did you feel when you opened that prize egg and found that there was a frog in your prize egg? In working with purpose statements, I think it'll be helpful to see a couple of examples. So let's start off with a quantitative study. I did my study on the thriving of doctoral students. And so my purpose statement read, the purpose of this study was to compare doctoral students thriving quotient at a private Christian liberal arts university to the national norms for graduate and doctoral students on the thriving quotient in order to address that purpose statement i then formulated this research question as one of my research questions does the overall thriving quotient of doctoral students enrolled in a private christian university differ from the national norm for graduate and doctoral students the purpose statement lines up with the research question and so it's going to turn into a well-planned study let's look at another quantitative example this purpose statement reads the purpose of this non-experimental quantitative survey study is to discover if teacher self-efficacy predicts teacher work engagement for expatriate teachers in international schools in china and then the research purpose is often followed by a sentence that might define or give more information about one of the words, one of the variables, or the participants in the study. And that's what that purpose statement does. Now let's move from that purpose statement to one of the research questions. To what extent does teacher self-efficacy predict teacher work engagement in expatriate international school teachers in China. And then another research question that could be asked from that same purpose statement might be, of the three factors of teacher self-efficacy, instructional strategies, classroom management, and student engagement, which factor is most predictive of teacher work engagement of expatriate international school teachers in China? So you can see from these examples that the purpose statement should just flow naturally into those research questions. Now those were quantitative examples. Let's take a look at a couple of qualitative purpose statements and research questions just in case you're doing a qualitative study. The first purpose statement reads, the purpose of this case study will be to examine how teachers from Title I elementary schools implemented school-wide positive behavior plans. Now from that purpose statement, the dissertation student crafted this qualitative research question, reading, how do teachers at Title I schools implement their school-wide positive behavior plan? Now if you're doing a qualitative study, the next thing is to make sure that those interview questions or those uh, areas that you're gonna explore in a focus group or the things that you're looking for in documents line up with that purpose statement and that qualitative research question. Let's look at another qualitative example. The purpose statement of another study reads, the purpose of this qualitative case study will be to discover how a virtual learning opportunity using various digital tools influenced professional development for teachers in a rural school district. 
And then you can see the dissertation student went on to define what is meant at this stage in the research. Virtual learning will be defined as, and she continued to define that to set the parameters of her study. As a dissertation student, you might ask, well, what makes a good research question? There are multitudes of resources out there, including some of the textbooks from your research courses that will help you formulate wonderful research questions. But basically, if you're thinking about that inverted triangle design that I keep referring to, you have your topic and your problem that you found, your purpose statement, your research question sh should guide you and let you know exactly what it is that you're looking for. In other words, if this is the problem, the gap in the literature, and this is my purpose statement that says what I really want to know, then my research questions are going to say, well, I, I want to know this, so I need to collect data about X, Y, Z. When you're working on your initial research questions, Look back at those textbooks, look back at all the helpful things that you've gathered during your coursework to help you formulate research questions. And remember that your research questions tell you where you're going with your research. They should guide and direct you. Good research questions are concise and they are focused. Thanks for watching. I hope our time together has been purposeful in helping you plan a purpose statement for your dissertation. Remember to stay encouraged because we're learning all along the journey.